how are you developers i trust you're doing fine in today's video we'll be doing our second project that is the quiz app and i hope you'll enjoy so stay tuned the html and the css of this project have already been pushed in our github repository so if you if you have access to it you can just pull the changes and if you don't have access to it i'll send the github repo link in the video description it will be there so if you pull the changes you'll see there's this html and the html is just simple just a simple div with the a class of app and a h1 there to show the random quiz and there is another div with class quiz that contains a h2 with id of question and there is where the question will be placed and there's an extra div with an id of answer buttons these are the choices of the of the question so there'll be a choice a question and there'll be choices also there'll be a next button below the question and the choices there'll be a next button and that is how the interface will look like and in the css you can see there is just colors font size padding for all those but the thing that i want you to notice is that the next button is is hidden by this display none so currently when i run the app the display button will be visible because it's hidden in the with the css and there's some extra classes here you can just look at them yeah so that is how the html and css is and our work will be to write the javascript so if i run the app this is how the app looks like there's just a question will be displayed here and this will be the choices you can see if i hover on the choices the background color changes and currently if i click it nothing happens and the next button is supposed to be here but currently it's hidden in the css i already showed you that so this is how our app will be will be there'll be a question there'll be choices then a user is expected to select the correct choice then once the user selects the correct choice the next button will appear and they'll select next then a new question will will come so that is how the app will be then at the end of the or at the end of the questions a user is, will be displayed by the then the score how many questions they got right will be displayed at the end of the of the questions and there'll be there'll be an option to replay the game so that is how the that is how basically the app will will work so let me show you the algorithm of this app like we said in the previous videos that before you build any app you have to write a step-by-step -step procedure of how that app will be built so i'll just create a new file i'll call it algo dot markdown tmd to get it's a markdown trial and here i'll put the steps i had already written them so i've just pasted the steps there so i've just pasted it you can just pause the video and write them if you want to this will be the step that will follow i'm, I'm using markdown previewer to view the steps in this format here you can see there's this format here that i'm viewing the steps with so this is the algorithm algorithm is just a step-by-step -step procedure to how we'll we code our app or before you code any app you have to first write the step that will take for you to finish that app so the first step is to get the data to then I'll, I'll create a function that will start the quiz then i'll create another function to show the questions then another function to reset the state of the questions like to remove the answers button and stuff then there'll be a function to when someone selects a choice what will happen we'll do that function then when someone clicks the next button what will happen then at the end of the game there'll be a function to show the the score that the user has has got at the end of the game so basically this is the, the steps that we'll be following if you pull that if you pull these notes and you open the javascript file you can see it's not empty there's some data there and this data is just an array an array of of objects and each object contains a question and some choices that is how the object is it contains the questions and choices so there is many ways to get that you can see the first step here is to get is to get the quiz data or to get the questions so you can just get the questions from an api and fetch the the questions but i chose to hard code the questions so the questions are hard coded in this in this you can see there are almost 10 questions there and each question each object has this question question key and value then there's this another key of choices and the choices key is also an, an array of objects so the choices key has the text that is london and there's this one answer so if the answer is correct the value of answer will be 
true and if it's wrong the value of answer will be false so for every question there's only one answer that has the true value you can see for this first question only the cartridges of france the text paris is one that has true the rest one have false false so that is what we'll be using to check if the user selected the correct answer or the wrong answer so that is our data you can just go through the data to understand how the data is but i think that is how it is all of them are just the same all of them have the same structure so it's just simple and if you want you can also fetch this data from the apis like you, you already talked about the ninja api you can go to ninja api and get the api or you can use even rapid api to get the questions from one of those apis so that is the first step that we did is to get the, the questions so now we'll continue the next step that is to implement this start quiz function so without much ado let me start to implement the start quiz function the start quiz function is the is the initial function that will be called when our project is is run so it will not be it will just be simple so i'll just let me just implement it for you to see how it will be so it's called start quiz like that i'll use an i'll use an arrow function to to define that quiz so the the start quiz what it will do it will just call the show question function and since this is the first function that has to be fired we'll just call it immediately here start with like that so now app is run it will call the start quiz function and the start quiz function will call the show question function but currently we don't have the show question function and according to algorithm that is the next thing that will implement the show question the show question function yeah so let us just implement the show question function it will also be an arrow function so show question is equals to an arrow function like that yeah so the function of this show question function like the name suggests it will be showing the the question so the question if you look at a html the question is supposed to to be here so we'll get this element first this h2 then we'll change its its text to the text of the of the question so first let us get this this h2 first so i'll create a variable here to get that h2 so i'll say const i'll call it question element then i'll use the get element by id and i'll select this h2 it has an id of question i'll just copy it so that i don't misspell it like that so now if i if i have selected that element inside the show question function i'll get the actual question then i'll replace this element with that with that question so since our data since if you look at this data it's an array an array of objects so since it's an array that means it is zero indexed so the first question is index zero so for me and the first question to be displayed and the question that is displayed first that is and this first question to be displayed first so it is index zero so here i'll create a, a variable to keep track of the index of the question that you are selecting so i'll, I'll use the let i'll say let's current question index so the index of the current question i'll call it current question current question index like that and by default i want it to be zero so by default the current question will be the first question then when someone clicks the next button will increment the index but we'll do that later so currently i'm just to show the first question so the index is zero then inside the the show question i'll create a variable for the current question so i'll say let current question so the current question will be our questions array of index zero or index current question i think that is clear so since our data is, an, is in an array the current question that and you, and you want to display the first question so the index of the first question will be index zero so the current question will be questions dot questions of index current question index and this current question index will increment it as when someone clicks the the next button we'll do that later but now since you have got that first question we can store it here then 
inside this element, this question element, you can see question element, you can use in HTML there, is equals to current question. But keep in mind, current question is all this object, but we only want this this text. So we'll, we'll, we'll use this key of question. So to get this text, I'll use this key of question. So I'll say current question dot question like that. So now I'll have changed the text of this question goes here with the actual question. I think that was clear and step by step. So let's go to the browser and confirm that it's working. So let me save my code first and let's go to the browser to confirm that this one is, is working. If you go to the browser, you can see that the text that, 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 that was here initially it was saying that question goes here, but now it has been replaced with the actual question that it's supposed to be to be displayed. So you can see that our code worked. So the next thing that you want to do is you want to replace this with the actual choices. You want to replace this answer one, answer two, answer three, answer four with the actual choices. So let's go to the code editor and do that. So one way of doing that, you can go, you can select this buttons and you can change their their text but since you want our code to be dynamic and you are not and according to this if you look at our data each question has four choices in our data but maybe the, the data that we fetched has more than four maybe it has five or six we don't we are not sure so we want to make these choices to be dynamic so instead of instead of just replacing this text with the choices we'll create our own buttons you can see how we'll do we'll just get our own buttons depending on the number of choices that are there so we we'll look through the current question so i'll say current question so the current question is all this object here all of this is the current question but you keep in mind that current question has this option called has this key called choices so i'll say current question those choices then i'm to look through the, the choices so i'll use the for each here like that so I'll say for each choice, for each choice, don't know I'm missing the spelling. For each choice, do something. And the thing that we'll be doing, we'll be creating, for each choice, we'll be creating a, a button. And you know that to create an element, you can use the create element method. So I'll call it button, button like that is equals to document. I'll use the create element method and the element that I'm creating is called button like that. So we'll create a button element for each choice, we'll create a button element and we'll switch to a variable called button. Then we'll change the text of that button. So I'll say button dot in HTML. I want the text to be this text here. This text here. So you can see this text is found in choices dot text. But since you are looping through that, it will be choice. Each individual choice has a text key. I think that is clear. So the button that will be created will have a text of that choice.text. I think that one is clear. Then after that, we want to append our choices, our new button. We want to append that new button here in this element. So we'll first get this div. You can see that it has an ID of answer buttons. Let me just copy that ID. So first, let us, let us get that DOM element first. I'll just duplicate this, then change the ID here. To be that one, the one that I copied. Then I can change the name to answer buttons. Yeah. So what we'll do is just say answer buttons. Dot. We want to add that, that created button here. So what we'll do is say append child dot append child. And what are we appending? You're appending that that's a button that we that we created. I think that is just straight. We'll create a button and we'll append it there. But if you can see these buttons here, they have this class BTN. And this class BTN is the class that has been used to style this, this buttons. If you go to CSS, you can see there's this BTN here. Let me search for it. This BTN and has this background color of white, has all those styling. So you also want our new button that you have created to have the same, the same style. So before before we append the child here, we can add those styles before we append. So you can say button 
not class list but add btn so we'll add the btn class to the newly created button so that they be they look the same as the as the initial button so let's go to the browser and see how this looks like so if you go to the browser you can see now on top of this initial buttons that we had we have some new buttons there and indeed they contain the actual text that that we wanted so the next thing that we can do is maybe we, we can hide these buttons we can hide these buttons we can hide them yeah that's the next step that we'll do and this code is now it's it's good because even if you have like five five changes they'll display all of them five so the next task that we will do is to hide this trailer. So let us do that. Let's go back to our code editor and hide this, this initial four options. So you can also see in our algorithm, the next step that you have to do is to use the reset state. That reset set is the one that hides the buttons. So you can just create that function called reset state. So I just create it below the, the show questions. I create that function called reset state. So can, below the show questions here, I can say const reset steps. So then it'll be a function, an arrow function actually. And what we'll do, we'll check if the answer buttons has, we'll do something like this, we'll say, we'll loop. Say while answer buttons dot first child. So if it has children, it, this one, this thing will be, will be true. So if it, it's true, what we, we want to remove them. So we'll say answer buttons, dot remove child, remove this one here, remove child. And what child do you want to remove? We want to remove the child that is there. So it will be answer, but, answer buttons, dot first child. So this one will loop, checking for the first, the first child for that answer button, until all of them are, are removed. So all this, all this here, will be will be removed using this method here and also since this since this method is not called we have to call it for it to work so i'll call it before i call the show question and to call that so i'll call it inside the show question like that so every time the show question is called first reset the state then you show the question i think that is clear so let's go to our browser and confirm if that worked so if you go to the browser you can see indeed all the initial four were removed because it returned the first node of that div in the dom so those four are the initial nodes in the dom so they were removed and these ones remained the thing it worked so the next step is to add event listeners when someone click any any choice you want to listen for that but click event then after listening we do we do something so let's go and do that in the code so to add the listen for the click events in every button you can add the event listeners to this button that you can so you can say button dot add event listener and we'll be listening for the click event and when this button is clicked what do you want to do you want to call this method called select choice so for you now I, by now you know that this button you mean the the choices that we we have there so if that choice is clicked, I want to call this function called select choice. And I'll define that function here. So let me define that function here. So I'll say const select choice is equals to an arrow function. And that. So when you click a button, there's a pointer event. Let me just show you. Let me this you can you can you can, you can take that event. Let, let us log this event and see something. So I'll say log that event. So you can go to the browser and check what when you click a button, what is logged in there in the console because it's the, I'm, I'm logging this event that happens when you click a, a button. So let's go to the console and check the properties of that event so that you can know how to manipulate it. If you go to the browser, you can just open your console. You can open the developer options and open the console there. And once you open the console and like let me click this london you can see once i click any button there's this pointer event so when you click a button the event is called the pointer event and if you if you expand that you can see it has some properties like it's trusted true alt key 
some many properties there but then that we are interested in is this one called target this one called target so you can see if i if i hover on this target it it highlights the actual button that was was clicked so to get the actual button that was clicked we can say it's the event and the key called target so you can say event dot target or e dot target to get the actual button that was was clicked i think it's clear so let's go back to our code and write that so now we know that for us to get the actual button that was clicked can you, you can use the target attribute so you can say in the target so now if i log this it should show the actual element that was clicked so we can go to the browser and confirm this edit target before you assign it to a value and do some manipulation with it so you can see if i click let's say i click rom you can see it logs the actual button there if i click london it logs the actual button so now we can we can get the actual dom button that is is clicked and you have seen it in in action so it does assign that button to a variable the clicked button every time you click a button that button is logged so instead of logging that button you want to save it to a, a variable so I'll, I'll create a variable i'll call it selection button and i'll save it to target to that variable so let's go back to our editor so instead of logging this button and to assign it to a variable so i'll say const i'll call it selected button selected btn is equals to e dot target like that so i've, ass I've assigned th that button to a variable so now the, th the next task is to check you can see this this function is that it checks if the selected choice is correct and this part for updating high school do it later but we want to check if the selected choice is, is correct so that is the next step so since we have access to the to the button and we have the answers here i told you that the answers the correct answer has this value of true so the correct answer is paris paris so i want to check if the button that has been clicked is paris if it's it's paris it is correct if it's not paris it's strong so i believe you're talking about the data dash attributes the data the data dash attributes and they are accessed using the data set property of html the attributes of data prefix attributes i believe that you, you know about them if you don't know about them i'll show you a little bit about them so there's some attributes in html like we know attributes like this class is an attribute this href is an attribute so there's also an attribute called data dash so you can have an attribute here say data dash something any name this is these people use this data dash attributes to create your own attribute so you can say data dot answer is equals to maybe something anything then if i want to if i want to access this in my hey in my javascript i'll use the data set property for the data set property of the of javascript to access this so that that same idea is done that we want to use to check if the button has the correct the button click is the correct answer so before we check first here in the in the show questions before you listen for the click event we want to add a data dash attribute in these buttons so i'll say if if that if there's a choice if i say if choice dot answer if this one is true choice dot answer you have seen here in the in the data that you have there's this key called choice then there's one called answer so if this answer is true we want to add a data dash attribute to to that button so let's say if choice dot answer if that if this condition is true what do we want to do we want to add a data you have said button it is a button I say data set you have said in javascript you use the data set in html you use data dash and in javascript you say data set and the name of that we'll call it answer and that answer will be something like choice dot answer what you have done here is like you go to html you create a new a new attribute call it data dash answer then the value of that answer will be some will be let's say paris like that that is what you have done but you are doing this only 
to those only to those buttons that have the correct answer if they don't have the correct answer we will not do we'll not do that so that is what we have done there you have created this data set you have called it answer and you have assigned it the value of choice dot answer choice the answer is this text that i've shown you here this text if for this question the choice dot answer is this one so it has the value that true or false so I think I have showed you wrong, I've displayed you wrong. So it says something like this. It says it will be data dash answer is equals to true. Like that. That is what you have done here. In this line, that is what you have done, you have done. Because the choice dot answer it's either true or, or false. It does not display the actual answer. It displays that that's true or or false. So let me just delete this one and save my code. So once you have you have that once you have that done to the to the the correct answers, you can compare if the clicked button is the correct answer here in our selected choice. You can say if the selected button because it's called selected button selected button. If the selected button the value of it that I said dot answer is equals to three is equals to true keep in mind that this data set we only add it to the correct answers only so if this selected button is the correct answer its value of data dash answer will be true and if it's not its value will not be will not be true so if this one is true we'll, we'll save that to a variable i'll create a variable called i'll call it is correct So this one will either return true or, or false. So if, if the selected button, if the selected choice is true, is correct will be true. If it's wrong, the is correct will be false. And we want if the is correct is true, we want to change the background color. So I'll say if is correct. So if it's correct, I want to change the background color of that selected button. So I'll say selected button dot class list dot add. In CSS, there's this class here called correct. This class correct adds a background color of green. This class of incorrect adds a background color of, of red. So if, if the answer is correct, you want to add that class of correct. And if the answer is wrong, so I'll say here else. If the answer is wrong, add this class of, I'll just copy this line and paste it here. And I'll change the class to in incorrect. So let me just explain this code before we look at it in the browser. So first, what we did for each correct answer, we added this data dash attribute to that button, and the value is either true or or false. Then below here, we are listening here. We are listening for the click event, checking which button has been clicked. And we said that you know the actual button that has been clicked to use the e.target and you have already proved it. So the button that has been clicked will be saved in this selection button variable. Then if that button, that selected button has this data set of answer equals to true. And it will only have this data dash answer true if it is the correct answer according to this code here. Only the correct answers have that data dash answer to true. If it's not the correct answer, it does not have that does not have that let us it so if it's the correct answer you'll have that and if it has that this is correct will be true and if it's correct is true when the the button to have a, a, a background color of of green and if it's false it want it to have a background color of of red i think that is clear so let's go back to our browser and check that if you got the browser let me just close this console so that it can be clear so if you got the browser the capacity of france is Paris. So if I click London, you can see it has the background color of red. If I click Paris, it has a background color of green. Rome, red. Madrid, red. So the wrong answers will have a background color of red, and the correct answer will have a background color of, of green. But now, someone can, can select all the four answers at, at once. But you don't want that to be the case. You want when someone selects only one answer, the other buttons will be disabled. 
that is what to do that is what we want to do if someone selects the first answer the other balance should be disabled so let us do that so we all know that this select choice button is called if someone has clicked one of the choices or one of the buttons because we only call this function when the click event is performed so when someone clicks a button is when this function is is called so to disable the other buttons you can disable them here in this function because this is the function that is being called when someone clicks a, a button so we can say here if any button is is clicked you want to disable you want to disable them so we want first we can select all the buttons that are, that are available are, are available so we can select all these buttons not these ones the ones that we created here we want to select all these buttons all these buttons that we created here we are not sure there are how many because depending on the number of choices if there are five choices there'll be five buttons so we're not sure how many they are so you can just loop the answer buttons so i'll say answer buttons not children all the children of the answer buttons but keep in mind that the answers buttons they are an html list they're not they're not you cannot use for each for this ones because they are not a, an array so we can first change this one to an array by using the array from method so i can say array from so this array from method will change this to an array so once it's it's in it's it's it is an array you can use the for each on it because the for each is only used in arrays and not lists so we look through this these children and we are sure that these children aren't buttons so we can call it for each button don't know i checked so i'll say here for each button so when someone has clicked on to disable all the buttons say button dot disable disable and we say that value to be true so in some we want when someone clicks a button the all the other buttons will be disabled even the one that has been clicked so that someone cannot change their their options that is what we want to do so we can go to our code and see if that works so let's go, let's go back to our code i said let's go back to our code but i meant let's go back to the browser and see that in action so sorry for that so if you go back to the browser and let's say i select london it will turn red then the other ones will not turn any color because we only said we only change the color of the one that has been clicked and you can notice that i cannot i cannot click this other these other buttons that is the thing that you have done so when someone clicks one button it disables all the other buttons that means that the person can no longer change the answer and that is what you wanted to do but the additional thing that i want to do when someone clicks let's say it's an it's a wrong answer i want the correct answer to be green like here if i click parry it will be green and i'll not be able to click the the other buttons but if i click let's say madrid it will be red and they'll not tell me the correct answer is but and our app if someone gives a wrong answer they tell them that the correct the correct answer is this and how will it tell them by changing its color to be green so if i click madrid it will be a wrong answer it will be red then and the correct answer to turn green and also i want when i've already selected the answer of this of this question and the next button to appear so that i can go to the next question so let's do those two tasks then come back to the, to the browser so our first task is to to make the correct answer to be green so here in, before you disable the buttons you can say you can do that you can say if if the answer is correct i'll say that we have already we have already seen how to check the correct answer we use the data set so i'll say if the data set dot answer is true if the button there's a dot here button dot data set dot answer is true this is how you have you have seen how this is the is the way that you check for the correct answer i've already talked about that so if that is true and to add this class so i'll just copy also this code here then i'll paste it here but i'll change this one to be button instead of selected but I'll change it to just be button like that. so this code will check for the correct answer and it will add this class of correct and i've said that this class of correct it adds the green background color so before disabling the the actual buttons first add this background color then disable the the buttons that is the thing that we did then after that we also want the next button to appear so first we have to get this next button here this button we have to get it so i'll just copy this id 
then here in our variables up here let me first minimize this so that our code can be short then i'll duplicate this one and change this id to the one that i copied then i can call it next i can call it next button like that but i'll use camel case to be consistent so i'll keep this capital b capital so since that since we have the next button here in the select choice after someone has selected and to display the next button so i say next button that style the display is equals to block so i told you earlier that the next button was there but it was hidden by the SSS, we set its display to be none here. I think I showed you that here. Display none, line 72. So to, to make it to be visible, I just have to change its display to be, be block. It will be visible. So now I've, I've added this, this class. If someone selects the correct answer or the wrong answer, this class will be displayed regardless. And then in addition to that, I've added this next button to, to show. So let's go back to, our, to the browser and see those two things that you have added. So I've got the browser and click any button. You can see now the next button appears. Let me refresh. Also, if you click the wrong answer, you can see the wrong answer is red and the correct answer is, is green. So someone can know that this is the wrong answer and this is the correct answer. And also now the next button is, is visible. Now our, ne our next task is to make this next button to, to work. I want when I click this next button and to show another question. So let's go back to our code and do that. So in our code, we we'll listen for the click event on the next button. So let's say next button, add event listener, and listen for the click event. So when someone clicks the next button, is when this this will happen. So when someone clicks the next button, we want to do something. So I'll create an arrow function there, like that. So when I'm someone when someone clicks the next button, the first thing I'll check I'll check if the questions are over. So I'll say if the current question. If the current question index is less than the questions dot length. So this will only be true if there's another question. Because if there's no question, the current index will not be less than the length. So if there's there's, there's another question, I'll call this function call handle next. You can see it here in the in the algorithm. So I'll call this function call handle next. handle next button i'll call that function and if there's no if there's no another question and to end the game so someone can can restart so if there's no other question and to restart the game so i'll call this start quiz function again start quiz so i think it's clear when someone clicks the next button and there's more questions to show we'll show those questions with this function and if there's no questions to show We'll just restart the, the game. So let's let us work on this function that shows the next question. So here on top, I'll just create that function. Handle next button will equal to an arrow function. Like that. Then we want to call the show questions. But before we call the show questions, first remember that we had coded this current index to be zero so when someone clicks the next button want this index to increase to go to the next question by we we'll go to one then fix next again go to, to two like that so i'll before i call the show if i call the show question button before i call the show question function first i have to increase the the index so i'll say index plus plus or index plus one any any that is is good to you but may I prefer this index plus plus then also here we'll check if the questions are are over uh, for now let's first if someone increases we'll check it later that is for the score let's just first now call the show questions button first like that we'll come and add the score functionality later you can see in the in the algorithm that's the first the last thing that we'll do start the show functionality so if someone clicks the next button We'll check if there's more questions. If there's more questions, we'll call the handle next button. And the work of this handle next button function, it will increment the question index and call the show questions again. So now this show questions function will be called, but with another index. So it will not display the same question, it will display another question because it is called with another, with another index here. 
I think that is clear. So let us go to the browser and check if that works. Let me save my code. Let's go to the browser and check. Okay, now if you go to the browser, I'll just click any answer. So if now I click the next version, you can see there's a new, a new question. So the next has has worked. So it'll just it will continue to work like that. It is just working fine. Every time I click the next button, a new question is appearing. But now someone can, can click next without answering the you can say I can click next without answering the question, and that is not something that you want. I want before someone answers a question, this will not be visible. And be, someone should answer the question first, and then the next button appears. So let us do that first if we can continue that any other thing. So before we show the next question, let us first hide the hide the next button and it will appear when someone clicks when someone first selects something. So here in the show state, show question in this search state function. You can just add another code there for hiding the next button. So I can say something like next button dot style dot display is equals to none. So this code is for hiding the, the next button. I think that one is clear. And if someone selects uh once if someone selects a choice, it will it will it will be shown because in the selection there's this code for showing the next button so i think that is clear so let us go to our browser and confirm that if it works so if you go to the browser and select let's say london you can see the next button appears if i click next i cannot go to the next question until i answer this this question so i think now our app, our app is almost complete so i can just go that but now if you go let me just continue and show you what i want to correct if i go like that till the last question to the last question, I don't know where the last question is. I'm not getting the last question. Yeah, you see now after I've reached the last question, there's this bug here. Now the questions are over, but there's no next button. There is, there's nothing. So now I want to, to set a condition. If the questions are over, instead of displaying this question and to tell the person that your question is over, maybe you scored. Yeah, and to track the score. So your question is over and this is the is the score and then i'll add a button here for play again so let's add that functionality so let's go back to our code and introduce the the score the score functionality so for me to keep track of the score first i'll have to create a score variable so let me just create it here i'll say let score so initially i want the score to be zero when the when you start the game and the score to be zero then when someone gets the correct answer if someone gets the answer right i want to increase the score so where, where do we check if someone has the, the answer right we check it in the selected in the selected choice so i go to the selected choice here so if someone is correct we first increase the score we're saying score plus plus then we add the the correct button or we can just add the correct class add the class then increase the the score any any does not matter the the order so yeah that is okay then, then at, the, at the end of the game we want to show the the score that someone has got so i can just create the show score function so i'll say const show score show score function let me just get this function give me an arrow function also and the work of this function is just to show the, the score. Yeah. And we want to show the score here. Here in this H2. Yeah. So we, we, already, we already got this element. We call it, what did we call it? We call it the question element. So we'll display the score in the question element. So here in the score, we'll say something like question element. Notes in HTML. Is equals to let me just use back tick. I say I'll say you scored, then I display their score by using this. Then I can tell them you scored maybe five out of out of the possible questions. That is the question dot length. Question dot length. Let me just after that yeah 
So I think that that is fine. Then after after I've showed the score, I want the next button to say something like play again. I don't want it to show next question because there'll no, no longer be a next question. So I want it to show play again. So I'll say next button dot in HTML is equals to play again. So I've changed the I've changed this text here to say play again instead of instead of next. I think that 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 is in order, and I think that is the only thing that. But keep in mind that the the next button is disabled here when the when the score is over when the game is over the next button is disabled. So we have to enable it after I've changed the if you after I've changed the after you've changed the text we can. We can also show that function by keeping this display to block. So I'll just copy this code here. Move this code here and paste it below here so that I can so that I can I can see the next button. So I think that is in is an order. And also the, the next thing that I want to do, I want to remove the the traces. I want to remove the traces, but first I, I think let me just check first if they're still there. Then we'll see. So let's let's go to the browser and see if this shows score works. But also we didn't we didn't call this we didn't call this method. So it won't work. First let us call it. We'll call it here in the handle next. So we we'll, we'll put a condition here and say if we we'll just copy this condition here because it's the same. And say if the question if the questions are over, call the if the questions are not over, this this is if the current question is less than the question is less, that means that the questions are not over. So if the questions if the questions are not over, call this show question function. But if the questions are over, call this show score button. So I'll paste that here. Yeah, I think that is in order. If the questions are over, if the questions are not over, call the show question button. If the questions are over, call the show score. But I'm sorry, I think that is all. So let's go back to our browser and confirm that. So I'll just I'll just play this game quickly, so that so that I can reach the end of the of the game. You can see if our show score works. I'm not sure if I'm getting these questions or I'm missing them. I'm not even reading the question. I'm just clicking so that I can reach the end of the question. Let me just go to the end. Yeah, I think it works, but these are still there. So you can see it says you scored 3 out of 10 and this button is saying play again. But the bug is that these buttons are, are still there. So I want to hide this button. So let's go back to our code and hide these buttons. So to hide the buttons, you can call this reset state function because you can see the, the work of the reset state, it hides the button. So I can just call that reset state function. So I can say here reset state. Before I want, I want to reset state the first, you can just call it there. Then after I've, I've hidden the buttons, then I do this, these things. I think that is in order, so you can go back to our browser and confirm that the show show score is working. So if I just click, I just click random random choices. I don't know the answers to these questions. Don't think I'm dumb. I'm just clicking. I'm not even reading the question. So I'll go to the last question. Let me just go quickly. Let me just click quickly. I'm just clicking. Let me just click this one. The last one is done. That is near. Yeah. I think that it's working fine. So after I finished playing the game, you can see it's telling me I scored 3 out of 10. And there's no those choices because there's no question, so there should not be choices. I think that is fine. And if I click play, play again, it should, it should restart the game. But currently it's, it's not restarting, so let us solve that bug. If I click play next, it should restart the game. So let us go and solve that bug for play next. So I think there's a bug because when I click the play again button, it calls this start quiz, but it it does not start the quiz because initially the current the current question is over. So before in this start quiz, we first have to reset our current question again. So when someone restarts the game, we want the quiz to go back to zero, and also we want the score to go back to to zero. I think that is in order, and also we want to change the value of the. You have seen that. Let me show you something. 
here in the show score we change the value of the next button to say play again but when someone restarts we don't want it to say play again we want it to say next so also i'll just I'll copy that line i'll paste that line here and instead of saying play again i need to say next as it was before so when someone restarts the game and first to change to reset the current index to zero because keep in mind if you go to the next question what is it if you go to the next question you are you are increasing the index so if you restart the game the index is still the final index so when someone restarts the game first you have to reset the index to zero again so that it can start to the first question again then also for good game good inter interface for the user for good user experience i, I also set the score to to zero because if i don't set the score to zero someone might score more than the available available questions someone might score 20 out of 10 which is not practical so when someone restarts we also want to set the score to zero again so when someone restarts his score is zero again then it keeps track of the number of questions that he got right then also the value of the next button we want it to be next we don't, we don't, we don't want it to be play again because keep in mind that we changed it here we change it here to play again so we want to change it back to next if someone plays the game again so let's go to the browser and see if that is in order so yeah i'll just select random random answers i'll just select the nearest answer as usual i think i'll miss all of them but no problem let me just select quickly so that i can reach the end i'll just select i'll just select yeah you can see my score is 0 out of 10, so the score is working. So if I click play again, it will now restart the game. And I can just, just play like that without ending. So that is the app, and I see I don't see any, any bug. So I think our app is working fine. Let me just at least let me just score something. Let me just call it correct. Rising star, I think it's Japan, I'm not sure. Harry Potter, JK Rollins, that one I'm sure. Largest ocean Pacific, yeah. Yes, yeah, seven out of ten. So the game is is fine. So let us go back to our code and see if we can do some refactoring. But the the basic functionality, all of them works works fine. So let's go back to to our code and see if we can do some additional things. So I think this is just this is the most basic version of this app. You can add a lot of things. Like let me just look for something that I can add. Maybe I add some. Yeah, I can I can add the question number for good, so that someone can know in which which number they are in. So I'll say let question number. This this is just an, an additional thing. It, it can work without this, but I think that will provide a good user experience, so that someone can know in which number they are in, so that they don't answer the questions. And then, so the question number will be the current index plus one, because the current index is zero. So zero is the first question. So it'll be zero plus one. So the first question will be number one. The next question will be index one, then one plus one, two like that. So that will be the question number. Then and the question number to be displayed before the the exact question. So I can say here, I can say something like, let me use, let me just use the concatenation. I don't want to use the backticks. So I can put here a dot. Then I can say question number here, question number. So you display question number like one, then dot, then the exact question. I can just add a space also here. So it will say one dot space then the question. Let's go to the browser and see if that did something. So if you got the browser, you can see there's this number that has been added here. So one dot, then the number, if you go to the next question, it will say, if you go to the next one, it will say two dots like that. So it keeps track of the, in which question number are you in? Keeps track of the, of the number of the question that you are in. So that is it for the app, guys. You can always make it better. To give you ideas, I can say maybe you keep track of the high score. Maybe you store the high score in local storage. Then if someone beats the high score, that will be the new high score. So you'll overwrite the actual high score with the new high score. That is the first idea that you can do. The next idea that you can do is maybe set levels. Like this will be level 1. Then when someone scores maybe above 7, you can go to level 2. Like that. And also, other thing is that you can get these questions from APIs. There are many APIs out there that have questions. You can use make good use of the apis and yeah that is it for this app let me just first let me just get all of them before we end the video i think a of france is this one that is okay mona lisa i think mona lisa i'm not sure da vinci yeah largest planet jupiter yeah 
uh, who lost this thing Jane Austen that is correct chemical symbol of gold agenda ah it's Oram I missed that one I'm not sure this Gram Grambel yeah it's Mount Everest yes riding star is Japan yeah then Harry Potter J.K. Rowling that one I'm sure largest ocean is Pacific Ocean yeah at least I got nine so I'm not dumb guys see you in the next video peace out